I'm going to ask my questions and then Senator Reid will follow on. Uh, first of all, welcome to all of you, particularly um, uh, my constituent, uh, Mr. Morial, who we're proud to claim as a New Jerseyan, so it's good to see you. I just want to make uh, one comment, and that is, is that the system as it is isn't working for us. So if we think the system as it is is working just fine, then something is wrong. Uh, I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of Chairman Brown's Fair Access to Financial Services Act. But in my view, in order to root out discrimination and promote equitable access in the financial system, we need to start at the top with our regulators. Right now, there is a staggering lack of diversity in leadership positions at the institutions that set and enforce the rules of the financial system. As a result, black and Latino communities lack representation at the table when these critical decisions are being made. So I'd like to ask Ms. Rice, Ms. Nelson, uh, what are the consequences of underrepresentation of minority voices among financial regulators? Sure, I'm happy to uh, start off there, uh, Senator Menendez, Menendez, and thank you for the question. So I think it's, it's critical because bringing uh, diverse representation to the table when rules are being set increases the likelihood of creating a more accurate rule. It also increases the likelihood of ensuring that we have the right data brought to bear. I mean, that is one of the reasons that we had the foreclosure and financial crisis in 2008, because we had the wrong data, right? We were being informed by the wrong information uh, in the lead up to the crisis. But it also makes sure, that, it makes sure that the rules that we craft are accurate, and we're considering how those rules are going to impact all market segments. So it's extremely important. Yes, I would agree. And, and I think this panel demonstrates that when we're looking for diversity, it is important that we have a diversity of thought, a diversity of experiences, people who understand the plight of communities that suffer the racial disparities that we've outlined today, and people who have not traditionally had access to credit, access to equal financial services, those who have experienced direct discrimination based on motive or based on impact. Because those voices, as, as uh, Ms. Rice has said, will impact how we think about policy and how we create policy that can remedy those harms and not perpetuate them. Well, I can tell you from my own experience of 30 years in Congress between the House and the Senate, if I and others like me were not here, issues that are critically important to our communities would just not be either brought up or pressed. And uh, that doesn't mean that others aren't well-intentioned, but they're not doing it. They're not putting political capital on the table to make it happen. One of my concerns has been the Federal Reserve um, it has a well-documented diversity problem in its 108-year history. The Federal Reserve has never had, for example, a Hispanic regional bank president. And this is an institution that's making some of the most important decisions in our economy. Um, let me ask you, uh, the FDIC found that nearly 6 million households in the country are unbanked. These families have no access to checking accounts, debit cards, credit cards. Instead, they use cash for day-to-day -day purchases. And another 14% of Americans are underbanked, which means they rely on money orders and other alternative financial uh, services to complete transactions. Mr. Morial, in your work, have you found that the unbanked and underbanked populations are disproportionately people of color? They're disproportionately people of color. And the reality is, is that in communities that are banking deserts, payday lenders, check cashers, uh, informal lenders proliferate. Uh, and they rent money at usurious interest rates. They rent money on abusive terms, and they proliferate. And if you go into any community uh, across America, you can go into Newark, uh, or you can go into Jersey City, or you can go into Patterson uh, in New Jersey, you can go into Providence, you can go into Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, uh, Scranton, or Harrisburg, and you go in the black and brown communities, you're gonna see an active effort to use television advertising, radio advertising, uh -oh. street teams to market uh, these types of services uh, in these communities. So it's a double-edged sword. The banks are not there, uh, but uh, the predators are there. And it has a negative impact on black and brown and underserved, I might even add, 
uh, such is the case in many rural communities, such is the case in many communities that happen to also be white uh, or Asian. Uh, underserved, underbanked communities are a haven, a breeding ground for predatory financial practices. One final question, and then uh, Senator Warren is next. Uh, according to the New York Times, Wells Fargo conducted fake interviews with women and minority candidates for positions that had already been filled. The bank reportedly undertook these fake interviews to artificially boost diversity statistics in an attempt to satisfy an internal goal to interview at least one woman and one person of color for each position. Uh, that information that uncovered by the New York Times is not only highly offensive, it suggests to me of a systemic bias and discrimination at the bank, but raises questions of a broader pattern. Uh, Ms. Nelson, if a bank is bringing in candidates of color for positions they already fill just to create an illusion of diverse hiring practices, uh, can we say that bank is making a good faith effort to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion? Uh, no, we cannot. We cannot. I think it's quite clear that that's a... F and that, that speaks to the culture, right? Absolutely. And, and it speaks to... <clears throat> The, the notion that there's already uh, an idea as to who is worthy of working at a bank and who is pre-selected as a preferential candidate in that workplace, and that candidates of color have already been ruled out of the equation. Thank you very much. Senator Warren. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman.